Um, some data breach statistics. There were about 3 million data records lost or stolen in 13. Um, so it's not something new. It's uh, going on all the time. They really started being discovered big time in 2011. So more and more and more we're finding that networks are owned. They just had a, a company in Silicon Valley last two weeks ago. They found out that there were some uh, nation state actors on their network and wondering why are they on our network? We don't have anything that they would be interested in. Well, it wasn't what they were interested in. They were selling software to a, another company and the nation state was interested in that company. So they attacked the nation uh, or this company because they were a low hanging fruit. They were easy to get in. They didn't have a bunch of network infrastructure and security. They got a hold of the software, tainted that, and then fed it over to the other company. That company then put that software in production, and now they had a backdoor in. So don't underestimate the lengths at which hackers will go to get on your network. They will go to great lengths to get onto your networks. So again, uh, there's many reasons people do this kind of stuff. Not again, this is the first time you're probably hearing it, but there's a lot of reasons why people will want to get into your networks. So uh, from theft, political, gain, um, hacktivism, all of this kind of stuff. There are a lot of reasons. So trends in 2014. So we have source code leaks, old school malware techniques, growth of 64-bit malware, which of course it's gonna happen. It's just software, right? Everything's trending in that direction. Malware researcher evasion. So the, the tactics that we use to detect them, they're learning that. So one takeaway from that is this is a tit for tat game. For everything we do, they'll come up with something else. This goes on all the time. I always tell people when you're breaking into this industry, you're going to have to constantly learn like a surgeon or a doctor, right? One of the reasons I didn't go to medical school when I was in uh, college is because I'm like, man, I don't want to spend the rest of my life learning. Well, boy, did I make a mistake. So I got into engineering. I went into software engineering and I do nothing but learn every single day. When I get up in the morning, I have to read and read and read. Not only does it change monthly, it changes daily, hourly. So it is, it is constant. Every time I turn to look and read more stuff, I'm like, how did I not know that? How did I not think about that? It's constant. So if you have the choice, if you're on the fence about medical school or not, go to medical school. So it's probably gonna be less learning for you. So we have mobile SMS forwarding malware that's been around since 2012. They're becoming ubiquitous, so widely used. Um, phones are a huge, easy, low-hanging fruit and a huge target today. The mobile space is a huge target. It can actually circumvent all the multi-millions of dollars we put on our network infrastructure. A cell phone can leak all of the data and not be detected at all. Account takeover, uh, attacks on corporate and personal data, exploit kits, um, social engineering, uh, all kinds of stuff like this. So we have some malware trends um, that we were just discussing. And we're going to talk about attackers increasingly lure executives and compromise organizations via social networks, right? So everybody wants to be out on LinkedIn and Branded Me has got this new thing where they're deeply invading all of the people that you know and, and stealing all of your information from LinkedIn. People are starting to post things on LinkedIn that are personal, so everybody's looking for a new way to switch off of LinkedIn, right? Because it's becoming the Facebook. So that's the problem. Um, so, but there's a lot of information. People just put too much information out there. If you're in the security industry, it's probably not even a good idea to publish where you work because they know what you know. So if, if Timber works at company X and company and Timber knows Cisco and Timber's a Cisco guy or just a Juniper guy or just a Giga, um, Gigamon guy, then I know what network gear they're using at that company, right? So if you're a specialist, if you're highly specialized, you should probably not be putting what you do um, on LinkedIn, okay? So you can put what you want on LinkedIn, you can put what you do and what you know, but then don't put where you work because now you've just linked those two together. And now I've got all the information I need. Okay, I just need a set of Cisco exploits because Timber knows Cisco and he works at Company X, right? There you go, boom, that's a big problem. So you just leaked a whole lot of information. Of course, they can scan the network and you know, see where you're going. There's other ways to find it, but make them work for it. Don't, don't just give it away out on social networking. So it's not, not everybody needs to know your business. Not everybody needs to know where you work today. Put that on your resume, keep it encrypted, and send it out when people need that information. That in itself is responsible security. And I look for that when I go to 
socialize people to my management or something like that or the companies where I'm working, I'll say, hey, look, you know, this guy's pretty sharp, you know, but he does expose a lot of information. You know, people tend to be very proud of where they work and stuff like that. So they want to socialize that and spam that out everywhere. Put it on Twitter. Hey, look where I'm working today. You know, this, this can be a problem if you work in security. For people that work in marketing, hey, that's great. But for people that work in security, you may want to rethink that kind of thing. So that's just one bullet off of here, right? So then we have Java remains highly exploitable. It's a feature, you have to deal with it. So you better, if you're gonna be using Java, you better have teeth on your network that can arrest it. So one of my little sayings is something that I've learned is you can't keep people out of a network. It's naive to think that. Um, at some point they're gonna get in or at some point they may have been there a long time before you even got there and you're just trying to get spun up. It takes you a while to detect it and like, oh, oh I see somebody's on our network, what do we do? So a good security program is something that will catch a breach early, catch it very quickly, and then give you the tools you need to eradicate those attackers as you discover them. Whether it's a new discovery or an old discovery, you have to be able to get them off of your network. So part of the exercises that I've been on are just trying to figure out where this guy's at today, which machine is he in today, and then get rid of him. And it's like almost impossible in some networks to do that. It's insane, the stuff you see out there that people set up. They have all these different ways to get in their network and they're not stru properly structuring their network security appliances. And you think you've got them blocked and then all of a sudden he shows right back up and you're like, what the heck is going on here, you know? So, and then you start digging more and more into the network and you realize, oh my gosh, they've got this other whole connection to the network that's completely insecured. Uh, because they procured an office and didn't, they forgot to add it to the network diagrams for people that were doing the architecture of the system, right? The system architecting. So it's a big problem. Um, Java, if you're going to have things like this, then part of the expense of bringing this in is you've raised a risk. Now you have to mitigate that risk in some way. So if you're going to bring a risk in, that's fine. We can have networks that are very risky but put the tools in place to arrest the problems as you find them and, and give, yourself, give your engineers the tools to discover the problems, right? So you wanna have monitoring of your network in place. You might need to do URL checking, where are things coming from, be able to shut down uh, networks in Russia if you see them connecting to your network, if that's not normal, you know, that kind of thing.